Speaking of being canceled, let me show you this, Don. Uh, Gina Griswold posts, Colorado's 24 presidential primary ballot is certified. The United States Supreme Court has accepted the case, and Donald Trump will appear on the ballot as a result. Uh, you know, your dad just is uh, almost the poster child of being canceled, suppressed, uh, sued, uh, arraigned, all of these things, and yet he still keeps coming out. What do you think of all these, all these uh, trying to keep him off the ballot? This is crazy. Well, it's insane, and don't forget, I mean, that's still a very leftist, uh, you know, state. If the Supreme Court said something or gave them some sort of wiggle room, they would try to make sure to take them off the ballot. You saw the Secretary of State in Maine uh, do something very similar, just not based on a case, based on some YouTube videos she saw, unilaterally just deciding it. So the people who screech uh, the most about democracy uh, and, and such, even though we're a constitutional republic, I think they want us to be a democracy so they can vote away your rights. Uh, but they do this stuff. They function unilaterally. Uh, and has tweets about, you know, all of the things that they're very hypocritical about. And yet one person decided, not based on anything, not based on a conviction or any findings of guilt or anything, to right. unilaterally take one person off of the ballot. Uh, that's not even a committee. She's not even a lawyer. And it was based on literally videos saw on YouTube or something insane. I mean, it, it is lunacy. And so the left is projecting a lot these days. Uh, they're, they're showing all of their cards uh, they're doing and saying all of the things we said that they would do. Um, and, you know, they're showing just how much they don't believe in democracy or anything like that. Let me show you. Let me show you this, Don. This is uh, I think this was from Fox posted this graphic states with suits. I did not know it was to this point to bar Trump from the ballot. The yellow is pending cases. Blue are dismissed. Green is pending appeal. Red, of course, is Colorado and Maine. And speaking of Maine, she doesn't even have the right. She's not legally, she can't take his name off the ballot. Yeah, she's done that. And uh, then the other color there, orange, is, is voluntary dismissal by plaintiff. You know, this is simply lawfare. It's just keep this thing up in the public eye, keep it spinning to hopefully something will take. Do you really think they think this is going to work? You know, I, I think their idea is, you know, they're sort of venue shopping like they are with, you know, having cases in D.C. where you know Trump's never going to be able to get a fair trial like you are in Fulton County, Georgia, where you know the same. And so uh, I, I think their theory is, you know, if you throw enough stuff on the wall, eventually something will stick. I think that's what they're hoping for. They're trying to do anything they can. They're trying to rig an election. They're trying to jail the, their, you know, clearly uh, their biggest opponent politically, uh, all of the things uh, that they yell about when it happens in third world banana republics are happening right here in the United States. Uh, like I said, it's dystopian. Uh, this is you know the Marxist playbook, and the Democrats are running it uh, you know, full. They are going all in on this stuff, and they're showing their hand. I just hope enough people actually wake up to see what's going on, and they understand that we have to push back against this stuff. Because once it goes this way, they don't just give back those freedoms. They don't just say, okay, you know what? We got Trump. We got what we wanted. Now we're going to go back to normal. This will become our very existence. And, you know, again, I, I don't think it's a stretch to say that. No, it's not. In fact, speaking of that, look at this poll. Now, take into fact, this is CBS. All right. So, you know, I, you've got to take that into account. But look, this is what people said by party. If you take uh, Trump's name on ballot, states should take Trump's name off. 81% Democrats, 19% uh, say keep his Trump, uh, keep Trump's name on. 90% uh, of, re of Republicans say keep his name on. 10% say take his name off of Republicans. But the one I want to show you is look at that independent number right there in the middle. Still, CBS poll. 56% still say keep his name on. You know, this is, it, it continues to astound me in a good way, how no matter what keeps thrown at uh, President Trump, it seems to only fuel his, uh, his fight for, it, for 2024. Well, listen, I, I, I think so. I mean, I, I think if they picked one thing that was actually real instead of just making up 30 things and, and hoping, uh, you know, they may be able to fool the people. But I think... The last few years, a lot of people have really awakened to what's going on in our government. They see that uh, you know, disparate treatment. Uh, they see the ridiculousness of all of these cases and the desperation uh, and the ridiculous lengths the other side is going to. And I think it's actually it's having the reverse effect. 
people are actually understanding just how corrupted our government is. The people who already had a lot of distrust in government, and you know, they realize now that whatever they had, it was not enough. Uh, you know, and that same would go for disdain uh, in what's going on right now in our government. So it, it, it's scary. It's pretty sad. And I think uh, the reason the other side, and frankly, you know, the deep state and the Washington elite on both sides uh, are all. Trump's the only guy that can break up that system. He's the only guy that they actually fear. They realize everyone else they control. Uh, they don't control Trump, and that w that's what scares them ultimately. They need that power, and they need the control. You know, all right, Don, I know I got to let you go here, but I, I want to ask you one last question. Uh, you know, going in, this is the, we were believing and praying that this wouldn't take this long to, to see this righted, the ship righted, and, when, and your dad back in office. But as we go into this last year of election process and seeing everything happen. What's the one thing, I want to know two answers. What's the one thing you're concerned about and what's the one thing you feel really good about going into November? Well, I feel really good about the enthusiasm. I mean, I, I see it every day, the amount of people coming up to me. I mean, and, and not, not just people who are sort of, you know, always MAGA Republicans, but people who are just, again, getting uh, all the things that I've been talking about. They understand that. They understand what is at stake, and really everything is at stake in terms of our freedoms and our liberties and all of the things that we truly uh, hold dear. Uh, you know, I think the things that I'm afraid of is you know, the unknowns. What are the games that the other side will play, right? They've proven right. they don't care about, you know, the sound bites that they throw out there. They don't care about democracy. That's, it's, a, it's, a laughing, you know, it's a laughing point for them. And they just play those games much more viciously and much more aggressively than our side does. So, you know, I'm hoping... Uh, that we are able to combat whatever insanity they're going right. to throw uh, at, whether it's my father or, frankly, that they would throw at anyone else to just win and to take total control of our country. Uh, so, you know, it's the unknown that's a little bit scary, but you know something's coming, so you just got to prepare for it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so let me bring in uh, the guys here. Uh, you know, Lance, uh, you know, I'm sitting here looking at Don, and, you know, his name, Super, says co-founder of uh, Winning Team Publishing. This is exactly what you and I have talked about, you longer than me, about uh, Seven Mountains. He, he, he was kind of forced into this to get some things published because no publisher would pick, you know, their authors. Nobody would do it, and yet so here he is. Uh, with Winning Team Publishing, Taking Back a Mountain. Your thoughts, Lance, before we let him go. Well, one of the advantages we have, and this is really encouraging to all of us, is they took uh, President Trump off of Twitter and off of Facebook. Since then, Elon Musk has grabbed Twitter, turned it into X. You've got Rumble now rolling as an alternative platform for all of us canceled and, and constantly um, edited on YouTube. So we have an alternative economy in terms of ideas. And uh, that means that the field is level. And like you saw in the data on trying to take Trump off the ballot, that 50 percent, uh, 55 percent, that's the Joe Rogan independent. Right. That's the Russell Brand independent. That's the Jordan Peterson independent. I got news for you, man. You're not going to be able to control the news cycle like you used to. And the pushback is going to be strong this year. I agree. Uh, Rob McCoy, your thoughts before we let Don go? The micro is going to surpass the macro. Traditional media or legacy media is becoming irrelevant, and these smaller outlets are growing in significance, and and that's that's where the American people are going. They're gravitating towards truth, and we're grateful for the president pursuing and being persistent and not quitting, and you too, Don Jr., thanks. Yeah, thank you, Don. We really appreciate it. And you look, I think you're right. They, you know, they've always said, hey, build your own. Then they'll put up every roadblock imaginable. Oh, you don't like it? Build your own. Build your own. We're actually doing that. You yeah. know, I'm, I'm doing it with a publishing company. We have Winning Team Publishing because literally mainstream publishers, even if they would take a book, we had people pay an upfront and then not publish the book because they didn't want this out there. And not from radical people. These are you know, sitting members of Congress. Uh, we, you know, you've seen what's going on with Public Square sort of taking on Amazon uh, and, and that model that's gone uh, so awry. You know, Public Square, where you're linking up like-minded small businesses uh, with people who actually want to support those businesses rather than giving it to the big, woke corporations that are out there that are taking your hard-earned dollars and, and donating it uh, to the causes that you would hate and that, frankly, hate you. You know, Public Square has been a great uh, avenue to do that. You have, you know, the guys at Patriot Mobile taking on woke telecom, you know, the parent company of AT&T literally tried canceling Newsmax and OAN uh, on TV. Uh, and so you, you have options now. Uh, it, it's gone so far, the pendulum has swung so far that you have actually people really fighting back 
and combating it. So those are great options. But what people have to actually do is actually go out there and take that extra step to go support those businesses, find out about them, utilize that service, sign up. Don't just take the easy button of, well, I'm on Amazon, so I'm going to hit a button one time and I'll just order it that way because, you know, something else takes three seconds. You know, on Public Square, you now have, they're, they're growing these platforms, but we need everyone's help. We need to vote with our wallets and, and get out there and actually support these businesses because once you take away the dollars, uh, the, the entire shift is going to be very dynamic. It sure is. Thank you, Don Winning Team Publishing. We're talking about go get the mtgbook.com. Uh, thank you, sir. God bless you and your family. And we'll be praying for you all this year. Have a good Amen. one, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, I was thinking during the break about what we just heard and we went to look up this verse. Uh, Psalms 57, verse 6. Uh, they have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They've digged a pit before me and in the midst where they are fallen themselves. That is what has happened with the left. And listen, we were, we've been here. You've heard prophetic words about this. This is what we were going to see as we moved into this year. We're going to see this start to crumble. That does not take the responsibility off of us. We still have to keep our hand to the plow. We still must stay involved, stay in charge of what's going on, and don't, don't wane stay tenacious. Let I me like te it. watch this short clip from his interview with Tucker about what was going on already inside the Capitol. Watch. By the time it was actually J6 and you had, you had uh, masses of Americans assembled outside the Capitol, um, almost like 99.9%, 100% peaceful. On the inside, you had FBI assets dressed as Trump supporters that knew their way around the Capitol. Before the doors even opened. Before the doors opened. Or else, how are you going to get around the Capitol? You've been there many times. You need a guide to get from whatever door you go in. It's a labyrinth. It's, it's, it's a maze inside there. So you, that's right. So there's no way, just Americans, most of which have never been to the Capitol, there's no way they can come in some random door that gets opened and then get their way directly to the to the statuary or the House chamber or the Senate chamber. It's just not possible. So the 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 FBI assets that were dressed as Trump supporters that were inside the Capitol were there, I believe, and evidence indicates that they were there to to specifically wave in the the Trump supporters that had gathered outside the Capitol and the doors open and they were allowed in. And on the inside were, were, oh, there's some more Trump supporters. But really, those were FBI assets, law enforcement assets that knew their way around the Capitol. And they, they waved those guys in, said, come on, follow us. And they, they're the ones that led them on the path directly. How do you think a guy has never been to the Capitol, going to come into the Capitol all amped up on, on emotion, and make his way straight to Nancy Pelosi's office. Come on. Come on, man. All right, Rob, you, you heard uh, from the great state of Louisiana, uh, Clay Higgins there. Now, here's the point that I hadn't really thought about. Now, I know we've been in the Capitol before, but he's right. It is a maze. I mean, and there's these little yep. doors, and you go down another hall and opens. I mean, uh, it brings up a very good point, don't you think? Absolutely. And and the Capitol itself is a, a fortress for the most part. Those doors can only be open from the inside. It's not like they pried them open. Um, and, and real quick, Gene, I, I want to shout out um, Andrew Womack. When I was a penny looking for change uh, and I defied the governor, he stood in my defense. Everybody attend this. I love that man. Thank you for um, being a part of all that and encouraging him. As far as Ray Epps and and the, this this narrative that they wanted to create an insurrection, their whole narrative is falling apart. And you have you have Mark Ibrahim, 
who was a DEA agent, who carried his weapon as a federal agent, was there that day, wanted to ensure that there wasn't any rioting, and now he's facing 15 to 20 years in prison, not because of the fact he was there with a weapon, not because he was doing anything illegal, but because he had the audacity to go on Tucker and say that there were undercover FBI agents, because he knew them. One of them was his brother, and the others he had trained with, and now they're going after him. Siaka Masakoy has now been arrested at the airport with his pregnant wife. He spent less than two minutes in the Capitol, walked in, was invited in, and was asked to leave and left peaceably. But because of the narrative of contending that this wasn't an insurrection, now they're coming after him. Uh, you, you, this, this is just the endless litany of, of attempts to try to label this an insurrection, and their whole narrative is completely falling apart, and they are desperate. They are desperate. Uh, I mean, now, one thing here, Lance, Clay, as a career in law enforcement, this isn't just, you know, a guy that's going, hey, he doesn't look right to me. No, he knows what to look for, so he's investigating. He's been very careful with his words. You can tell he's very measured with what he says because he knows he'll be held hostage if he makes a, if he makes a, a wrong comment. Uh, you know, do you think, do you see this as uh, gaining ground, Lance, or do you think it's just going to get swept under the rug again? Now, the moment I heard it, which was just 24 <clears throat> hours ago, I, I played it again, and then I played it a third time, and I'm going to probably print it out and make it a transcript, because here's what he said. He's a Christian, by the way, for those of you that are Christians, and uh, that, I say that because it adds an element to when you hear him, how he has a sense of fear of the Lord, that he doesn't want to embellish he doesn't want to uh, manufacture. He wants to judge rightly, like a man who's got to account to God for what he's saying and thinking. And here's what he said that you have to, you have to listen closely to get. The FBI has a national network of undercover agents embedded in Antifa, embedded in BLM, embedded in their Proud Boys and the One Percenters and the Oath Keepers. And the goal of that network was to stimulate and incite and provoke one another to good works. They made sure that there was going to be activities showing up at that event where there would be other, like the Antifa crowd, uh, which we saw, I think we just did a, a, a video of last night. We revealed it. We've got the underground networks. We've got the agents that are embedded in those groups that are all dressed like MAGA people. This this. Uh, this, uh, th this man here, Clay Higgins, says, um, um, a guaranteed 200, probably more like four or 500 agents in and around the Capitol. What were they doing there dressed like MAGA people? They were there to make sure that the innocents went in to the trap that was set so that they could interrupt the procedure on evaluating the legitimacy of the ripped-off election. That now, was their goal. Change the narrative. Yeah. It was changing. Right. Now, if you watched last night, uh, we played the video. If you didn't see last night, go back on Rumble and you can pull it up. And uh, listen, if you, last night we played a clip from uh, former Vice President Mike Pence saying he trusted uh, Director Ray that there were no FBI. And after all, if he says there are no FBI, there's no FBI. Uh, here's what Lance was referring to the clip from Clay Higgins there with Tucker about the number of people inside watch when you say that there were fbi assets in the crowd in, in the building beforehand and, and certainly outside what's the scale of this you're talking like 10 20 no um based upon some very conservative but like hard investigative effort evaluation of of the numbers from putting together eyewitnesses and and videos and uh, and affidavit statement and whistleblower statements and uh, court records that have been revealed through individual criminal cases where J6 defendants have been prosecuted and smart attorneys have forced uh, admissions by the DOJ and the FBI, but those admissions have been sealed within the parameter of that criminal case by protective order by the judge so they I, I can't share them but i've seen them so real 
hard, objective, and conservative um, estimates would would put the number of FBI assets in the crowd outside and working inside at at well over 200. 200? Yeah. Well over 200. Yep. All right. So, Rob, you, you can tell um, he's being very measured in what he said, just like I just mentioned. Uh, right. This says to me, just by watching the way he's handling himself in the interview, there's a lot more yet to be revealed. He's just being careful about what he can say so far, which, thank God, he's being very careful. And when you pray for his safety, uh, what does that say to no. you about uh, what we're going to see coming forward? Well, they're, they're playing whack-a-mole, and uh, they're not going to win. The, the, the narrative is rapidly falling apart uh, on, on their behalf. And, and again, I, I attribute that, uh, Gene, to outlets like yourself, that this, this micro-media that's taking on the legacy media or traditional media is responsible for, for their narrative falling apart because you, 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 you operate in truth, Gene. All right. And and that's they they don't know what to do. That truth will always prevail, but it's men and women who are willing to to be on the tip of the spear to contend. Representative Higgins is putting himself out there. We're saying let's pray for him because we've seen what happens when someone steps forward. Like my friend Mark Ibrahim, he, here he's a decorated military officer. He's been wounded in combat, and and he, he's a, a decorated DEA agent. He was getting ready to be a CIA ground operator. But simply because he went on Tucker to say there were undercover FBI agents, they come after him. But Ray Epps, who we have on film, who more than any other, I guess, perpetrator that day, was participating in insurrection, calling for it. And they're giving him kit glove treatment. And, and they're, they're just throwing softballs at him because he is obviously uh, part of the FBI's a t intention to to create some sort of an idea of an insurrection and they're failing right. miserably and keep pushing you're doing yeah. it gene this yeah. is this is what keep flashpoint pushing. army it is what it's all about all right so before i go to ray epps because i'm going to show you some news i want to give lance listen to this lance is there something you'd like to say before i move on <laughs> did you notice well, thank you gene because i didn't have to but i'm glad now listen i watch footage of how the FBI is trained to in, to infiltrate a mob right. in order to control it. This is this is like the Marxists know this. The riot people in the 200 cities that were in riots, they know this. Here's what you do: you get one of your agents who is on the payroll to get involved in the middle of the crowd, and here's what they say: "Come on, we've come this far. We can't stop now. We've come this far. We can't stop now." Ray Epps job was to say tomorrow we're going in tomorrow we're going in a whole group of other agents were saying come on we've come this far we can't stop now meanwhile you got Alex Jones and others with a bullhorn going don't go into the Capitol don't go in fed 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 we have a whole lot of right. footage exposing it the federal right. government the corrupt, and it wasn't just the Democrats. You didn't hear any whistleblowing from the Republicans. They both wanted Trump to lose. That's right. And they wanted to vilify his movement. And what, what you, the footage you didn't play tonight, you could probably play it again later. Why did they do it? They are trying to trash the credibility of the MAGA movement and the nationalist patriotism of his followers. Yeah, without a doubt. All right, so let, let's let's go down this Ray Epps trail. Sorry, t today, if you weren't watching the news, started about 7.40 a.m., look at this tweet, Gateway Pundit posts this. Ray Epps sentencing hearing today changed to a secretive Zoom hearing uh, after Gateway Pundit receives tip. The D.C. kangaroo court breaks the law because it's supposed to be public by hiding sentencing from the public. It's patently unconstitutional. That's at 7.40 a.m. You see the timestamp down there. Well, guess what? By 11.20 a.m., uh, Ray Epps sentenced to one-year probation, $500 fine after telling J6ers we need to go into the Capitol. Why did... Ta here's, here's the thing. This is his own tweet. Ray Epps says, I orchestrated it, talking about what happened. He said that. To his nephew. We weren't, he, nobody put those words in the mouth. He 
generated those words. Why was Epps on the FBI's most wanted list and then suddenly removed? You remember that? Remember how we saw him and then suddenly he was off that the big list with all the pictures? And why did the New York Times write a puff piece on Epps? You're probably not wondering, are you? You really know. And why is, like Rob said, why is he receiving such kid gloves treatment? Ladies and gentlemen, that's because of the corruption you and I are dealing with. But like that scripture, believe exactly what we're seeing. They're going to fall. You are wising up. And this is what's encouraging to me, Rob, uh, that w the American public has grown up a lot in the last three years. Not everybody. And we still got a lot of work to do. <clears throat> but there's a lot of people in America that's going, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Why? You know, there's a lot of us that would have just gone, oh, okay, and, and gone on with their life and complained about the price of gas at the pump. But now we're seeing Americans begin to go, no, wait a minute. Why does it? Why is he not here? Why is he there? Not there? You know, there, there's, there is a good side of this that what we're beginning to see is Americans standing up and saying, there's something wrong here. You know, Gene, we, we featured at our church, Capital Punishment, uh, with a great actor, Nick Searcy, and, and uh, the producer, Chris Burgard, and they put this movie together. And at the end of it, we brought all these J6 defendants up on the, the, the front of the stage, and, and some of them had to sit apart because they weren't permitted to speak to one another by the injunction given by the judge. And you saw these, it was, it was two grandmothers whose house had been, you know, the, the door had been knocked down to, with, by the FBI. And each of these raids cost hundreds of thousands of dollars as they come after these supposed insurrectionists. And, and then we were vilified in our local community and throughout the state because we would stand on behalf of January 6th defendants. And then we, we see someone like John Strand, who was uh, a security guard and w went everywhere that that his employer went on that day when they went in the capitol just standing next to to the person he was in charge of caring for that person his client got a misdemeanor and and no time in well a, a, a couple of months he's now in a federal penitentiary did everything that that person did but is in a federal penitentiary as the judge stated because i was at a sentencing hearing i went because of the fact that on his social media, he refused to change the narrative, believing that it wasn't an insurrection. And so the American people are waking up, but I have to give credit to folks like John Strand, Mark Ibrahim, Siaka Masakoy, all of the folks that were on the stage that night, because they've been willing to stand up. And even though Christians at first vilified them, now they're realizing, wait a minute, we have to stand with them. And it's again, because the word's been getting out and, and you have been faithful to do that ever since I've been on this program, Gene. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And so so have you, Rob. Uh, I. I you know, last night we had an interview, uh, an update from Jake Lang, who's now 1,088 days, 20 hours of the day in unbelievable in uh, in solitary confinement, uh, and yet Ray Epps, I mean, gets a year probation and a $500 fine. There's not, you know, there's this is obvious, ladies and gentlemen, and that's we we must keep the January 6. All those people that are in, in prison, in jail, in the gulag in D.C., we must keep them uh, forefront. We cannot let this just go by the way and forget about them. All right, Rob, what would you have to say? <clears throat> I, I just, uh, one last thing, Gene, um, because my heart's so heavy. A Ashley Babbitt was sideswiped by a Capitol Police officer, blindsided and shot to death. Uh, she was she was a, a, a police officer in the United States military, a, a, an honored veteran. And she she understood if she was told to stand down, she would. And, and the man shot her from the side, didn't even say anything. And her widow and her mom are, are just distraught. But now, now they've got a lawsuit. And, and I, I, I pray that the family of Ashley Babbitt is victorious in relation to this because that Capitol Police officer needs to be held accountable, as do all of them. And, uh, and, and people vilified them, but you know what? It, it's it's working. It's working. Keep it up, folks. Truth will prevail. Uh, truth will prevail, and we we have so much more to cover. Perhaps we'll get into it on uh, on Thursday night. But uh, Lance, I'll get you a comment here before we move on. Yeah, honestly, I was going to say I, I I was willing to pray, but Rob, when I heard Rob, Pastor Rob McCoy <clears throat> citing the names of seven individuals, 
Right. I mean, these are people, folks. I mean, in the, in the blur of media, I'm talking about numbers. But he's talking about their names. And I wonder if Rob, uh, if Rob could pray yeah, for them. And, and we could agree with him because this is on his heart. And I think, I think we've got power as a Flashpoint audience to make an impact. I agree. I think you're absolutely right. So, all right, Flashpoint Army, agree with Pastor Rob McCoy as he prays for all those J6ers. Go ahead, Rob. Thank you, Lance. Thank you, Gene. Lord, we, uh, we, we entreat you. We come before you. Lord, we remember those who are in chains and, and those who have been uh, persecuted for righteousness' sake. There are some who are guilty, but, but not to the extent for which they've been punished. And, and meeting out this justice, Lord, it, it, we know exactly that it is evil trying to silence truth. And God, I pray that you would comfort those who are in prison, especially those who have been in for, for over two years without due process. Lord, comfort their families. Let them know that we are praying for them. Let them know that they will be victorious. God, I pray strength for them, covering for their families and blessing. Lord, please, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We had our faith with that in Jesus' name. Let me show you this. I got four and a half minutes left. Um, uh, there's a lot of hubbub, and I'd be wrong to not bring this up. Uh, Speaker Johnson and some of his, um, some of what he's against. I want to play this from CBS News, Face the Nation. And this is about the 2020 election. Watch. Back in uh, 2021, you were the lawmaker who circulated the, the legal brief known as the Texas Amicus Brief, um, challenging the 2020 election outcome in a number of states, which by CBS editorial standards makes you an election denier. That's so, nonsense. Well, that's, election. can I get you on the record on that? Like, I've always been consistent on the record. Did, did you read the brief? Did you get a chance to read what we filed with the Supreme Court? Well, I... I have read extensively some criticisms of you, that. You but, read commentary about the brief, but not what we submitted to the court. But right? you recognize that President Biden won the 2020 election. Can you the just put President that aside? President Biden as an issue? was certified as the winner of the election. He took the oath of office. He's been the president for three years. What I, the argument that we presented to the court, which is our only avenue to do so, was that the Constitution was clearly violated in the 2020 election. It's Article Two, Section One, and anyone can Google it and read it for themselves. The the system mm -hmm. by which you choose electors to elect the president of the United States uh, must be done by the individual states, and it, the system must be ratified by the state legislatures. That is language, plain so language out of the Constitution. you still have issues That's with the validity of the 2020 election. The Constitution was violated in the run-up to the 2020 election. Doesn't that, matter? that upsets me because I'm like, she's trying to pinch and hold him, uh, Lance, when you see that about, and now that was just about a week <laughs> ago, uh, you know, about the 2020 election. Now here, why am I talking about that when everyone's jumping on the bandwagon to bash Mike Johnson because of the bills that just went through with the budget numbers? Now here's the thing. I don't know. I don't understand why Mike Johnson came on the side of pushing that through. We don't know all the details. Uh, I'm not endorsing his decision. I would personally, I'd like to see the border uh, closed before anything gets approved, but I'm sure there's more to this than what I know. But Lance, this is the guy that's there. We need to, we cannot, and we must not abandon uh, this man who is a believer that is standing uh, standing up for America, and I thought he handled himself very well in that interview, who she was uh, absolutely trying to uh, besmirch him and to make him look like a crazy person. Your thoughts, Lance? First of all, you know, Mike's a lawyer, and I got to tell you, uh, there's so many lawyers in politics, and you see why. Because, they, like he said, well, I'm saying, this is, I wrote down what he said. So if someone says to you and me, Gene, well, they'll do it to us. You're an election denier, aren't you? Well, actually, I recognize that Joe Biden was certified and that he did take the oath of office, but there was a Article 2, Section 1 was violated. Right. That's a lawyer's answer. It's brilliant. It is. It is brilliant. And so I appreciate a smart Christian for years defending Christians in court. And I agree with you. I've got notes here about, yeah, well, he approved the uh, funding for abortion, trans surgery, more money for Ukraine. Um, okay, but I, I could do the, t the hits on him. Sure. But like you, something in my gut says he has to work within the limited number. He's got what, only right. seven Republicans on his side, and they're not all with him. It's true. He cannot move further 
than the party's courage. And so what we really should do, Gene, is a deeper dive on why he is held back from being bold because he can't do it on his own. He needs a party that is unified. 2024 is here, and the Flashpoint Live Rescue America Tour is launching its first campaign on February 8th through the 9th. Join Gene Bailey and the Flashpoint Live team with Andrew Womack at Karis Bible College in Colorado Springs, Colorado. In 2024, we're raising the banner of faith across America to take our nation back. Join us on February 8th through the 9th at Karis Bible College. Register today at 2024flashpoint.com. Live.